Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. And in today's video, I'll show you how you can use a Power BI map visual in Power Amps Canvas app and vice versa. So let me show you what I mean. In my Canvas app, I've got a Power BI report of the United States. And on the right gallery, when I select any of the states, it automatically highlights that on the Power BI map. Now, if I switch over to Power BI, on the right, you see that it is a Canvas app, but that app automatically gets updated when I select any of the states on the Power BI report. The integration works both ways. Now, in my demo, I'm showing you the United States map. However, if you go to the map settings and take a look at the map types, you have options available for other countries. So as you can see, this map visual feature in Power BI and its deep integration with Power Apps Canvas app can take your Canvas app designs to the next level. So this truly is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let me first show you how to get that Power BI map visual for your report. And to do that, open up your Power BI desktop. On the bottom left, go to Options and Settings. Then click on Options. Right over here on the Preview feature, the first one on the top is Shape Map Visuals. And you will need that because before I click on it, you see here on the right, that's the only map that you get. However, after I've gone ahead and clicked on the shape map visual, I'll go and click on OK. It will prompt us that we need a restart. Now this restart is only for the Microsoft Power BI desktop. So I'll click on OK over here. The other one closes. I'll go ahead and X out of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that Power BI one more time. It's opening up. And now when we are in, when we go and take a look at that visualizations, which is right over here on the right, you see that there's this new one, right? See that shape map? that is completely different. It is not the same as this filled map. So that's the first thing you wanna do. Also, a question that you might have is, Daniel, which version of Power BI desktop are you using? So I'm using the July 2024. So it's not brand new, but it's not that old either. So at least you kind of be somewhere in the ballpark around that month and year. Uh, and if you're close enough, you will also be able to find that Power BI map visual. All right, so that's the first thing you wanna do. Now let's take a look at how we can leverage that with a data source. So I'll go and click on close. Um, let me also go and save this one. I'll click on save. Um, this one, I'm going to call that as live demo for embedding in Power Apps. And I'll go and click on save, All right? Right there, took care of that. Next, go ahead and get the data. So I'll go and click on more. And in my example, I'm gonna go and get it from SharePoint online. However, you can go and get that from other data sources as well. Another good one to consider is Dataverse. So I'll say SharePoint online list. I'll click on connect. Uh, the site URL that is coming from a SharePoint site. In the SharePoint site, I've got United States. So I'm gonna go and get my site URL, which is right over here. Not the full URL of the list, which means you don't wanna go and grab this URL. No, you don't want that. All you want is right down to that site. So in my case, it is modern team site forward slash POC, up to POC. That's the one that I want, all right? Just to make sure, I'll go ahead and highlight it, do a control C. Now I'm gonna come back to my Power BI report uh, and I'll put in my site URL. Now I'll go ahead and click on OK. So it's gonna go ahead and talk to my SharePoint site, making sure that the authentication is all good from my desktop all the way to that site. In your case, an authentication window may pop up. You might have to go ahead and put in your username and password. Just take care of all of that. Um, and then once you are good, you will also come up to this navigator. So in my case, I had it as United, so I'll just go and type that. There you go, United States, selected. It gives me a preview, which is all good, so I'll just click on load. Now once it is loading, on the right side, you see my United States over here, and I'm pretty happy. But one thing that can be a potential problem is the space between United and States. So let's go and take care of that, all right? So I'm actually gonna come over here into the report piece, um, I'll come in, I'll right click on it and I'll rename that. And all I'm doing is actually taking out that space. That is all I'm doing. It may sound like a simple thing, but don't forget to do that because very soon you'll figure out how that is going to help us. Um, all right, so we're going to come back over here into the report view. Now I can go ahead and get the shape map. I just basically went on that visualization and clicked on it. Um, I'll go ahead and expand that all the way out. 
And in this United States data, let me go and expand it. You see that title? I'll go and do a drag and a drop in the location, drag and drop in the legend, and then also do a drag and drop in the color saturation. And by just doing that, it gives you this beautiful report. Now, if you notice something, I didn't have to tell it that, hey, this is United States. It automatically knew that. Now, granted, it got some hints from the actual table or the data name, but it is pretty neat. And remember, in the introduction, I actually showed you that I am doing United States. However, you've got other options in the map settings, that map type. You've got other countries, which is also called as regions over here. So when you are testing this, demoing this, or using it, go ahead and change it to the map settings that you want. Um, all right, so since you're over here now in the visualization, this legend on the top, I'm going to go ahead and remove that because we don't need that. Um, also, we've got other things like this title. I'm going to remove that as well. Um, everything else is okay. One other thing I'll point out is on the top right, you see where the filters is? Um, when you've got this published over to the web and you go and get a web URL, uh, you will also see these filters. So if you don't want the filter to appear, this is where you come and you go and click on that I and hide it. Do that right now, all right? So what I'm gonna do next is I'll just make sure I'll go and click on save and it makes sure it's saving is good. And on the right side, you see publish, I'll go and click on publish. Moment I do that, this pop-up window comes up and it's asking about your destination. Your destination basically on the Power BI Cloud site, which workspace do you wanna save it in? So for my demo, I'm gonna select it as Power BI integration. And now I'll click on select and it is going and publishing it to the Power BI Cloud service, specifically in the workspace that I did. Um, the work the publishing usually takes almost instantaneously. There you go, while I was talking, it said success. And a good thing is that over here in the name, it's also the URL. So click on it. When I click on it, another tab opened up in my browser and it directly takes me into the Power BI report. But here's one more thing we need from here. On the top left, we see that file in the file menu. Click on it, see the embedded report. When you go and hover over that, that website or portal, click on that. And moment you do that, you get this URL. Select that, it's completely highlighted. Do a control C to copy it. And I'm gonna open up my notepad because over here, we are going to go and do some appending to it. But this is the big piece. In fact, in just another tab, if I just come over here and I paste that URL, you will see that it almost looks like a website. Nowhere over here does it even look like a report. And I love that because now when we go ahead and embed this into other places, um, you won't even know that this is a Power BI report and it's fully functional. Like if I go and click on it, it actually does the highlighting. I love how this map visualization actually works. So now let's go and add on to that because we want to be able to make changes to this report map using the URL. And there is ways to do that. See, in this documentation, which I'll link, I'll put that in the description below, you can actually go ahead and do some appending. Appending means going ahead and adding other stuff uh, to go ahead and modify this URL. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So while we have this over here, I'm actually gonna go and open up my notepad. In the notepad, we've already gone ahead and put in our URL. First of all, we wanna go ahead and put in this ampersand. So right over here, I'm gonna come towards the end and I'm going to go ahead and put in this ampersand. Now, some of you may be saying that, Daniel, usually for URLs, we start with a question mark and then other things. Excellent point. Now, when we go and take a look at the URL and we really look at it, you see that question mark has already been added and you can't put two of those. URLs just don't work that way. So since this one already has that question mark, what we're gonna start doing at is put in the ampersand. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the filter equals and the first thing I need to do is give it the table names. And this is why we went ahead and made that change. You see that United Space States, we remove that space away. It's for this reason. So we don't have any of these problems. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do now United States forward slash and you put in the original column name. Even though right now on SharePoint, we see that as name, but the original title, because we see that over here, right? Or we see that right over here. See the original is called as title. So that's the one that I'm going to go and get. So the original one over here, off after the forward slash is equals, and I'm gonna go and say Florida, all right? Florida is inside single quotes. So the ultimate test over here is go, let me go and highlight the whole thing. So I'll do shift, home, the whole thing got selected. I'll do a control C, open up another tab, do a control V, and let's see what happens. And 
there you go see just by url we went ahead and selected florida and if i hover over it it's giving me some information because the power bi report is still fully functional this is big if you've also got this completed you pretty much got 50 percent of this done because the url piece is fully functional so what we need to be able to do is take this report now and put it inside a canvas app so now let's focus on taking a power bi embedding it into a canvas app and see both of them still integrate with each other. So let me just go to my home over here, click on the app launcher, go to Power Apps. And in this environment, I had done some testing, so I'll actually switch over to another environment that way I don't get confused. I'll go and click on Apps. Uh, in my new app, I'm going to start with Page Design, uh, and I'll go with a blank canvas, all right? So that's what I'm going to do. Now we are loading it into the Canvas App Studio directly on the browser side things are getting ready. And here I'm going to say power apps with, with PBI USA maps. All right, I'll go and click on save. Now, the first thing I want to do is connect that to that SharePoint data source. So I'll click on data, click on add data, search on SharePoint right over here. Uh, that's the connection. We had it on our POC sites, so I'll select that. And let me just do a search. It was called United States. Perfect. So I grabbed the United States and that is my connection. All right, so that's good. What I'm going to do also is come over here. I'm going to click on insert a vertical gallery. Moment I do that, it'll actually select the United States, which is great. That's what I'll do. My layout on the right side, I just basically want the title. So that's all I'm going to do. And let me just move this over to the right. Um, as you know, in this case, it's all about the integration piece. So I'm not worrying too much about the responsive design. Uh, you know you have that option, all right? Let me select that a little bit. Uh, make that a little smaller. All right, we're good over here. Next thing I want to do is insert Power BI. So, so come to that insert and instead of scrolling down on the search, just type in Power and I get the Power BI tile. Um, let me go and minimize this a little bit and I'll go ahead and just expand it. So I'm not going to me me so I'm going to I'm not going to mess with any of these properties right now. Let me just go ahead and expand all of this, all right? And over here, you see on the right when I click on data, on the left, the actual property that you get is tile URL. So that tile URL is where I am going to go ahead and put in all of this stuff. So first of all, let's ignore this entire filter. Let me just go and grab this much, all right? Let me just grab that come back into our Canvas app, and inside the double quotes, let me just paste it in. And as you can see, it already loaded. Directly inside, you see that Power BI report, and it behaves like a report. So if I just go and click on play, you can actually see that there is some functionality going on. Pretty neat, pretty awesome. I love this integration piece. But, but what we need to do now is update that tile URL, and this is how you do it. I'll go and X out of it, come back into this URL, see that time URL. Now we need to do a little bit of manipulation and specifically make it such that it can be dynamic. What I mean is, you see how we had this URL over here, we went and put in this add, we went and put this and ampersand equals United States, all of that, this was a static entry. What we wanna do is go back into a Power App such that if I selected any of these items on that gallery, it should automatically be highlighted in this map. And there is a way to do it, but we gotta go ahead and manipulate this URL. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go inside the double quotes and already go and add some of our filters. So right over here, see that ampersand all the way up till equal. I'm gonna go and grab that one, come back into our power apps, and I'll put that inside the double quotes. Uh, let me go and expand that a little bit. And this is how you go and add that additional syntax. Why? So we can start to leverage the power effects formulas. This is what I want you to do. Give a space, put in two single quotes, go inside the single quotes, put in two double quotes, go inside the double quotes, and now put in two ampersands. And if you've done this correctly, you won't get any errors, like no squiggly line is coming up, but your map will be blank. But we're good, because why? It doesn't have anything selected just yet. However, now you will be able to use the power effects function. And for us, it's going to be gallery one. There you go, see, IntelliSense kicked in, which is great. I'm gonna do dot selected, dot, and in our case, it will be this one over here, name, title. I go and select that, no squiggly lines, and it is perfectly loading. So now if I go and click on play, it should work. Well, let me just make sure I'm on Alabama, 
it refreshes, doesn't work. If I click on Alaska, it refreshes, it doesn't work. And what I mean by doesn't work is it doesn't look like this. Like I am not seeing that. So what we have to do to fix this is actually do one advanced setting. Let me show you what that is. With the Power BI control selected, go to your advanced and you see this allow new API. It's by default false, change that to true. And moment you do that, it will actually ask you for either an authentication or it might just work. If it's asking for your authentication, click on the button, go to the pop-up and it will just work. But now it is working. So just to make sure, if I go up and on in the preview, click on Alabama, it is refreshing and it comes over here. If I go and click on say Colorado, it refreshes and it comes over here. This is awesome. The integration piece just works. So to be on the safe side, I'll go and save it. I'll go ahead and now publish it, directly published. I'll go outside it directly. I'll go ahead and leave it just to make sure it's all working. Go back into my app launcher, find out into my power apps. This is the one that we just created, see a few seconds ago. Click on play. When it, when it loads up, it's fetching the app. It does ask for a one-time sign-in, so I'll click on allow. I'll click on the sign-in, pop-up window, automatically authenticated, and it still works. See, it works really, really well. This is the integration of the Power BI report inside the Power Apps, and they both talk to each other. What I wanna do is now flip the switch where we will be in the Power BI report, but over there, I'm gonna bring in the Canvas app and we will make sure that it still works the same way. So I'm gonna start fresh with a new report. I'll come over here, I'll click on blank report, and it's gonna open up another Power BI window, which is great. I'll go and even click on save. In the name, I'll call this as Power BI US Maps with Power Apps Canvas, and I'll go and click on save. Let's go ahead and get that data once again. I'll click on get data, click on more, we need to do a search for SharePoint. And like I mentioned before, you could even use Dataverse. Click on connect. Um, I will go and get our URL because that's the one that we need. Remember from that SharePoint POC site, right over here, select it only till the site URL, not the entire uh, list URL. Put this here, click on okay. Make sure we go ahead and get our list and that name was United, so I go ahead and grab that one, come to the load. In this case, I don't really have to change that table name, but it's just good practice, at least for me. So once this thing loads up, um, I'm gonna come on this side right over here. I'm gonna go on the left side where there is table view, right click on that one, I'll go ahead and do a rename and just take out that space between the United and States. Perfect, we got that one. This time we should be able to see that visualization right over there. Perfect, so I got that visualization. I'm not gonna fill this up completely because we're gonna use Power Apps in this section, uh, but I'll expand the data table, uh, the tile, drop it in location, drop it in legend, drop it in color saturation, everything else looks good. Uh, let me just go ahead and do some cleanup. I don't want the legends. Um, let me go to the, uh, in the general, click on that title, all right, I got, got, this is good. All right, so, so far I'm just gonna make sure I've got everything saved up. Now, also I'm gonna go and put in my Power Apps. So right over here, you see that Power App visualization? I'm gonna go and click on it. The first thing that I want over here is the title. So I'll select the title, that's all I'm gonna do. Next, it's gonna ask me, hey, select your environment. So I'll go and make sure it's in the same environment because we just did one in the production one, which is the Christian Family Prod USA. So I'll go and do that and now I'll go and click on create a new. It says it's almost done. I'm gonna go and click on go to PowerSub Studio so it actually goes inside the studio. Gives me this pop-up saying, hey, here is your big long URL we're gonna put in the browser, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. It automatically opened up another tab. Put this all information over here. So now we're actually gonna go into the Canvas App Studio. It's getting things ready. And voila, with the welcome, it's all good. Important, important thing for you to note is you will actually see this Power BI integration right over here. If you don't see that, which means the integration is not effective. So make sure that is there. Next, I'll come into my insert and in my insert, I'll go and put in a vertical gallery. Now inside my items, all I need to type in, all I need to type in is Power BI integration dot data. That is it, that's all I need to do. 
Also, in my title section over here, the layout, all I want is basically in the text. I'm going to go and say, change that from text to this item dot and it's going to be name. Now you may get an error over here because the integration has complete because the integration hasn't gotten completed yet. I'll just still go and click on save. Um, this one is going to be the I'm going to say P apps integration with PBI report. All right, I'll go and click on that save. And it is already published. It's very good. Um, let me go back back into our Power BI report and go and do publish. I'll click on save. It is publishing. Let me do Power BI integration. Click on select. It's giving me the link. Open up directly into the tab. It's loading. I haven't received any error yet. And there you go, it has gone ahead and loaded. Now, just to make sure, I go and select that. And if I click on any of this, it is not loading, but that's fine. What we'll do is we'll go back in, we'll go and click on this edit. One more time, it'll go into the Power uh, Apps, Canvas Apps site, and we'll just make sure that it works. So here's a tip, is that if you get this problem from your desktop site, that's fine. Go ahead and publish it on the cloud because the cloud Power BI talks much better to the Cloud Canvas app. So, so keep that in mind. Once again, if from the desktop you are not connecting properly, go ahead and publish it. Make the connection, publish it. We can fix that from the cloud side. So for the desktop one, I'm actually gonna go and close over here. Uh, we are back into from Power BI from here. I've gone ahead and pushed it out. From the cloud side, I've opened up the Power App Studio. And here, I'm gonna go and select it. And over here, I had it as name. But guess what? If I go ahead and close it, it's actually titled because remember the original SharePoint column name. So I'll click on save. I'll click on publish, publish this version. This is good. So I'll go out, I'll go and leave. That's fine. I'll go and close it. We switch back to our Power BI, go back to the report, make sure that it is saved. And if I just go back to our workspaces, Power BI integration, I will see our new, I will see our new report over here. I'll click on that one. And there you go, it is loading. On the right, you see the full gallery, but if I go and select say over here, Washington, the Canvas app gets filtered. If I go to the other extreme, if I go and go to Florida, you see the Canvas app gets, exp uh, you see the Canvas app gets filtered. So you see the synergy now? Here, we flip the switch. If you select something on Power BI, the Canvas app gets updated. Now sure, you can go and do a little bit of cleaning up over here. I can go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so it actually nicely fills up. And then you can always open up into the Canvas app and make the little changes. But you see what we just did. The integration works both ways. And in this side, it's the Power BI's interaction that affected the updates in the Canvas app side. Wasn't that awesome? And once again, I went and did the United States map. You've got other possibilities as well to leverage for yourself. But think about the countless possibilities. You might already have a Canvas app with some kind of location services data in it. You can go ahead and take that and embed that into Power BI so that if you select something on the map, your gallery for the Canvas app will get filtered. Or do it the other way around. Take your Power BI map put that into your Canvas app so that that map will automatically get filtered based on the gallery. It will truly blow the mind of your end users. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully you got some ideas to leverage for your use cases. And as always, keep using Power BI with Power Apps Canvas app. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.